Before we begin, here is how I will define beginner and novice. Beginner, you don't know anything. Novice, you're capable of completing a game jam. Let's begin. Step zero, don't overwhelm yourself. There are going to be hundreds of different skills you are going to need to learn to become a good solo game developer. Take your time and stay consistent. You're not going to be making anything good in the first year anyway, and you are far better off spending your time learning how to have fun while game devving and passively becoming a better game dev through that rather than trying to make your dream game from the very beginning. Step number one. Learn programming 101. You don't need to be a good programmer, but you do need to have a base understanding if you want to make anything. How do you learn how to program? You just Google Python 101 tutorial and learn the following. Variables, functions and arguments, operators, if and else, and foreign while loops. You should be able to get this within 10 to 15 videos Alternatively, just watch Mrs. Zizz's programming introduction. That will get you 90% of the way there. Why Python specifically? The syntax to it is very similar to Godot's GD script, and there's a lot less initial stuff you need to learn compared to languages like C Sharp. If you want to learn something else, go ahead. There's a thousand of different tutorials for thousands of different languages with thousands of different accents. Step 2. Follow a couple of step-by-step -step tutorials. Now that we aren't completely clueless about programming, we can get to the fun stuff, right? No. When it gets We're hit, going I want to build it by Delta, set to our vector by our so, we'll say. so there are two main benefits of following a step-by-step -step tutorial. Number one, you get a mostly idiot-proof introduction to the engine. Number two, you are left with a very powerful project you can reference in the future. Your goal at this stage is to try and learn 20% of the engine that you are going to use 80% of the time. This is going to include nodes and GDScript. I personally recommend that you complete the following. Heart Beast 2D Action RPG. This is without a doubt the most comprehensive introduction to Godot. It will teach you movement, tiling, animation, enemy eye, a bit of shadering, and a lot of just reusable RPG mechanic systems. I still recycle some of the things I made during this tutorial since it just works really well. The other step-by-step -step tutorial I recommend is Born CG's Create a Simple 3D Game. This is a little bit older as it's made in 3.1, but there aren't a lot of really good step-by-step -step 3D tutorials yet for Godot. So if you want to work in 3D, this is the best introduction you're going to get. I still recommend that you start with the tutorial made by Heart Beast though. It just covers so much and it will give you a great introduction to the engine. Step 3. Attempt to make a basic game and probably fail at it. Now that you have a basic understanding of the engine, you should attempt to make a basic game just to see how far you get. Keep it simple and refer back to the tutorial projects that you had already completed. Your goal here to see if you can reuse the nodes, reuse the code, and adapt it into what you are making. Once you hit that brick wall, you're going to want to start looking at tutorials for more specific mechanics. If you need to learn how to jump in a platformer, you want to look up a platformer tutorial. If you need to be able to click objects and interact with them, you're going to want to just simply Google Godot mouse tutorial and look at what is available. But there is one very important thing with all of this. Step number four, building puzzle pieces. You are going to be completing a lot of tutorials and you don't want to have to learn the same thing twice. You should always do these tutorials in isolated projects first and then adapt them into your main projects so you have something to reference later. While I do recommend that you try and make as many games as you can during this period, another great way of learning is to create isolated mechanics for a larger game that you may want to make in the future. For example, if you want to make an RPG, you may want to learn how to make an experience system, an inventory system, a character creation system. And this is a great way to make a project that you may want to make down the line without having to fully commit to it. Also try and improve the tutorial once you've completed it. This step will actually let you learn rather than just mindlessly copying down code. Step number five, 
participating in a game jam. After around three months, if you've been doing this most days of the week, then you're probably going to be ready to actually participate in a game jam. The aim of this is to just have a deadline as a reason to make and finish a game. I recommend that you do one that has around a week timeline, and you just want to think realistically about how many hours you can put into this. Once you've worked that out, aim to make a game in a quarter of that time, and use the rest for polishing. Use whatever resources you have available to make this game. Refer to all of your previous tutorials and projects. And if you manage to make a game that has a start and an end point that lasts a couple of minutes, then you have succeeded at this step. And congratulations, you no longer have to consider yourself a beginner. Step number six, moving onwards. At this point, everybody's paths are going to differ a bit. While the best way to learn is still probably going to be making games with a continuously increasing scope, such as a one-week game, then a two-week game, then a one-month game, then a three-month game, that's not going to be appealing to everyone. For me, I try and do a game jam at least once a year, and then I try and focus on games that I think can be completed in a year of dev time. My only advice is to try and keep the scope manageable. Don't make an MMO, don't make another dream game 2D pixel action RPG with crafting mechanics that resembles all of your favourite games, and don't think for a second that you should make this a job without first releasing a semi-successful game.